Hi, I'm uh, Niklas from Bitsquid and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how, get, how to get started with our tools and start using the Bitsquid engine. Um, I have two folders here that I've downloaded um, from Bitsquid. The first one is the toolchain folder and that's a folder that contains all our tools and the one we use to distribute our engine. Uh, as you can see, it has a number of subfolders. We have a documentation folder with documentation. Uh, we have this Enion folder, uh, which contains Enion executables for various platforms. Uh, we have a settings folder where the settings for different tools are stored. Uh, we have a tools folder where you find all the tools executables. And finally, we have a utility folder with some additional stuff. Now, the main tool that you will be using when using the BitSquid engine is the tool called Tool Center. That's basically a launcher that you can use to launch all our other tools. Uh, so I'll create a shortcut to the Tool Center here on the desktop so that I can start it easily and boot it up. Uh, so here you see all the different tools that we have in the engine like level editor, unit editor, lighting editor and so on. And we also have a run button here that allows us to start a game project and start running it. Uh, as you can see, this run button is grayed out at the moment. And the reason why it's grayed out is because we haven't set, any, set up any project to run yet. So let's do that. Uh, I'll go back to the desktop and open this sample folder. Uh, this folder which has also been downloaded from our FTP server, uh, contains a number of sample projects that demonstrate different aspects of our engine. Uh, as, as you can see, we have projects for animation, network, physics, sound, and so on. So to try out one of these projects, I go back to the tool center and I press this edit button to edit the project list. And I Press new to create a new project. I browse to find the project on the disk. Uh, let's, pick, uh, let's pick the animation project. Press OK to open that. Give it a name like animation. And close this dialog. Now, as you can see, I've set up a project, an animation project, and this uh, run button goes green. I'm now ready to run the project. Uh, there are some other settings here. Uh, PC emulation can be used to emulate other platforms than the PC on the PC. So if you want to see in your editors what uh, a more accurate picture of what the game might look like on a mobile platform, you can set up your PC to emulate such a platform here. Uh, this build menu can be used to select if you want to run the engine in debug mode, development mode or release mode. Uh, development mode is what you will normally be using during the development of the game. Uh, debug mode is useful if you want to attach a Visual Studio debugger and, and debug the engine. And release mode is what you use for the final release of the game. Is that it has all the asserts stripped out to run as fast as possible. And finally here, this run on menu, you select what machine you want to run the game on. This is at the local host, which means it's, it will run on your own computer. Uh, if you have consoles in your office or tablets and phones, uh, you can select them here. So you can start the game on a, particular, on a particular console or on a particular phone. And all the data is streamed to the console or the phone. So you can just pick any console or phone in the office that happens to be free at the moment. Uh, but now we have all this set up. So I'll press run here to run the project. Uh, when I do that, it begins by compiling the data. Since this is the first time I, I run the project, it needs to compile all the project data for my target platform, uh, which in this case is Windows, since I'm running on the local host. Uh, it takes a little while, but you only need to do this once. Uh, then the data is compiled, so you can just use it. And then it boots up. And I can run it here, I can run around with this simple character, go to Ragdoll, 
get back. Let's hide the menu so it's a bit more visible. Uh, and that's basically it for running the project. Uh, if we go back here to the sample project uh, folder, you will see that it has created an additional folder here called animation underscore win32. And this folder contains the compiled project data optimized for the Windows platform. So if you ran this project on additional platforms, you would see additional folders popping up here like animation iOS or animation uh, PS3 and so on. So this, this folder contains compiled data that is automatically generated when you run the project. So you never have to save this folder. Uh, it's this source folder that you would normally save into uh, source control and, and so on. If you check in here, you see it contains a bunch of different data files for setting up this project. So there are some units, some Lua script and so on. And all, almost all of these files are, are in text format, so you can look at them in a text editor and see what they contain. So if you want to, if you want to create your own project, a completely new project, uh, the easiest thing to do is to start with one of these sample projects and just make a copy of it. So I can make a copy, for example, of the empty project. That's a, a really minimalistic project that contains almost nothing. I just copy and paste here in the Explorer to get a copy. I'll call it something like test. Uh, I'll go back into this tool center, edit the project menu, create a new project, browse to find this project called test. Okay. Uh, I call the, give the project a name, say test. Now I can run it again. It needs to compile the data for this project. As you can see, it's creating a Win32 folder here. And once the compilation is done, boots up and I can run this uh, completely empty project. So that's really all you need for setting up projects. There is just one additional thing I wanted to show in this tutorial, and that's our console, which you launch by clicking this button. Now the console gives you a sort of console interface to a running engine where you can see output from the engine and also type commands to the engine. So if I launch this project again, and bring in the view to this recording screen and switch over to this console here. Uh, I can give various commands to the running game. For example, I can bring up a performance HUD uh, that shows some performance statistics for this game. And there are various other commands I can, I can give here. You can type help to get a list of the commands. And if an error occurs in the in the game or some or a warning or something else uh, all those warnings and errors will be printed to this console so it's good practice to always have this console up and running so that you can see if if uh, something is going a bit strange uh, so that's really all for this uh, tutorial uh, thank you very much and good luck with using the bitsquid engine